Good morning. It's a Monday here at GMA. We'll start with the failing First Republic Bank, seized and sold. J.P. Morgan Chase bought it, saved it from the brink of collapse. Now we're going to tell you what it means for everybody. And then the urgent manhunt in Texas for the suspect who authorities say killed five people, including a nine-year-old boy, after having a dispute with his neighbors. You'll see that story and so much more right here on GMA. We're running a little behind. Let's jump right into Transguide right now. Things looking good at 1604 in Shanefield. We'll be back after this next break. Now at 6, it's breaking news overnight. Federal regulators seize First Republic Bank and quickly strike a deal to sell most of it to J.P. Morgan Chase. The details now coming into our newsroom. And let's look out there with live cam. We're starting at 60 degrees, but we're expecting it to get much warmer. We're gonna check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your week. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's time to rise and shine on your Monday, May 1st. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful Fiesta weekend and had a chance to do some of the events. That's right. Uh, we move on into a work week and the first full month of May 2023. How things are shaping up this week, Mike? May is going to be differently starting off than what we just finished up with April. So now we will have some more rain in the forecast, but as far as the beautiful weekend that we had with low humidity and sunshine and now it's going to be what you would expect May to feel like hot and humid this week. So starting off continuation though of the weekend with clear skies, pleasant temperatures. We're down to 61 right now. We'll continue to drop down a few more degrees. Mid 50s Port SA, low 50s Rio Medina, Hondo and uh, Pleasanton right now at 53 degrees. Humidity is still on the lower side. Although these numbers have come up a little bit from yesterday, we're still you walk outside and it feels pretty nice out there. As a matter of fact, in some places you want a light jacket and of course you won't need it by this afternoon. All the allergens, mold, pecan, grass are on the low side. No oak is showing up, which is nice. Temperatures, we will continue to drop down a few more degrees and then warm up very quickly this morning. One or two clouds out there we will make it up to 80 today at noon. And then those higher clouds especially are going to continue to sort of move on in. I'm going to call it partly cloudy skies later on today. We make it up to 87 high temperatures, same as yesterday. Difference being you'll notice a bit more humidity this afternoon. Not oppressively humid, but enough out there and then it really comes back in overnight. So the next few mornings, not this morning, but the next few mornings, we'll be dealing with some fog, a little bit of mist around here, and then we do have some rain chances again, which is good news later on in the week. How about the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what's up? Hey, Mike, you know, I'm taking a look at some of these Transcad cameras and things are pretty quiet there at 10 at Bernie stage, but let's get a quick look around town. 37 at 410, uh, getting a little bit busier. That's always expected. We are now in a uh, the 6 a.m. hour, so we are going to see a few more folks that are waking up and getting the day started a little bit early. So just watch out as the commute gets rolling here. We did at least have one crash along I-10 westbound at Loop 1604, but that looks like it's already cleared out according to TechSat. I'm not seeing it listed anymore, so we're going to get this removed from our map momentarily. But let's now give you a wide look at the metropolitan area and some of our surrounding areas. The map's not showing a lot of red, but check this out. I did notice there is a little stretch of yellow and red that is building outside of 1604 uh, over off I-10. This is on the far east side and you can see it's just outside Seguin. This is a pretty tricky spot because there are no trans guide cameras in that particular area. So we're going to have to find out what's going on there. But chances are we may not be able to see the conditions of the roadways. But nonetheless, if you're traveling in from Seguin, you got to watch out. Let's see how that's impacting your drive time right now because it's about 32 minutes if you're traveling in. So I-10 westbound, we're not seeing any big delays, but uh, we're down to 31 minutes at this hour. 33 for 87 northbound heading in from Lavernia and about a 30 minute drive time from Floresville. So not really concerned about those travel times, but we'll keep a close eye along I-10. But back here on Transguide, things are moving, getting a little bit busier. We'll have more updates on your morning commute coming up a little bit later on. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Hey, this morning, the search is on for the suspect who shot was shot while riding in a car just north of the downtown area overnight. This happened before midnight. Police say the victim was in the vehicle when he was shot twice in the head. The driver of the vehicle took him to a nearby hospital. Now police say the man is in critical condition. Investigators have no suspect description. This morning, lots of questions remain following a murder at an apartment complex near the medical center. It all started Sunday morning when a man invited a man and woman over for drinks. Police say the suspect worked at the complex where the man and woman live. We're told the suspect shot and killed the man and held the woman at gunpoint for hours. After a standoff police, the suspect surrendered peacefully. He knew them for quite some time. He had a 
he had, he had built a relationship with them. And then last night, he uh, lured them over here. Police have not released the name of the suspect or the name of the person who was killed. And the search is also on for the suspect connected to an execution style shooting that killed five family members in Cleveland, Texan, Texas, which is just north of Houston. That shooting happened on Friday night after neighbors asked the suspect to stop shooting his gun in the yard of his home. Then the man went on a shooting rampage as of right now. He is still on the run and he is likely armed with an AR-15 style rifle. The FBI says he is a threat to the community and so far they don't have any leads on where he could be. There is an 100, excuse me, there is an $80,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. Happening today, El Paso is entering a state of emergency ahead of the ending of the pandemic era immigration policy known as Title 42. The city is anticipating an influx of immigrants when it expires May 11th. Asylum seekers are already camping out on the sidewalks and staying at shelters in Mexico just across the border from El Paso. The declaration is in effect for seven days. Then El Paso's city council will decide whether to extend the order. Well, more fallout from the U.S. banking crisis. Federal regulators have found a new buyer for First Republic Bank, and it's the latest effort to pull that distressed lender from the brink of following the collapses of two banks in March. ABC's Justin Finch has details from Washington. This morning, another race to rescue First Republic Bank. Regulators seized First Republic and quickly struck a deal to sell most of its operations to J.P. Morgan Chase, marking the third major U.S. bank meltdown in less than two months. The FDIC will share losses with the bank, agreeing that its insurance fund would take a hit of the $13 billion in the deal. The FDIC announcing 84 First Republic Bank branches across eight states will reopen this morning as J.P. Morgan Chase Bank branches. San Francisco-based First Republic saw its stock plunge 75% last week after revealing account holders withdrew $100 billion in deposits during the recent banking crisis. The deposit flight was greater than expected. The U.S. financial system still aching after back-to-back -back bank failures starting March 10th with the Silicon Valley bank collapse. Two days later, Signature Bank failed. And by March 16th, as investors raised red flags about First Republic, 11 major banks supplied a $30 billion cash infusion. Sources telling ABC News, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, and Fed Chair Jerome Powell brokered that deal. Our banking system is sound and resilient with strong capital and liquidity. But the Federal Reserve admitting in an internal review released Friday that it could have done more to avert that Silicon Valley bank collapse. California House Democrat Ro Khanna calling for tighter oversight. Every time the economy heats up, we somehow say deregulate, deregulate, and it never works out. And the Federal Reserve will be in the spotlight again this week for its interest rate decision. Another hike is expected in its ongoing effort to cool inflation. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. More Twitter changes are on the way. Elon Musk will allow media outlets to charge users per article as opposed to having them pay for a full subscription. Musk calls the move for a win-win for media organizations and the public. The feature is expected to begin this month. And speaking of Twitter, there's some buzz around a potential competitor. It's called Blue Sky. Right now, it's still in the invite-only phase, but it's backed by Twitter's co-founder and former CEO, Jack Dorsey. The Apple Watch is reportedly getting a major redesign. According to Bloomberg, the overhauled operating system will have a new focus on apps. The device will be reminiscent of the Siri Watch face introduced in 2017. And Apple is reportedly testing a tweak to the Apple Watch's physical buttons. Hmm, we'll see. 608, about 60 degrees. California mother and social media influencer has been found guilty of falsely accusing a couple of trying to kidnap her children. Still to come, the jail time she's now facing. Plus a shortage of some very common medicines after the break, a look at some options uh, for alternatives. Let's look out there with live camp. For now, we're at 60 degrees, but what can you say? We're going to have May weather, or the weather we normally experience during May, pretty much all this week. We're going to check in with Mike for all those details coming up.
And welcome back at 612. Now to a problem that's been building for the past year, a shortage of very common medicines, things like amoxicillin that's used for bacterial infections like strep throat or pneumonia, and a butyrol used in nebulizers that helps with respiratory problems. Doctors say while there's no reason to panic, it is important to know your options, and one option is penicillin. So penicillin can treat strep throat very well. It is, um, it doesn't taste horrible, and it's a, it's a very safe, kind of cheap thing to do. So we can actually use that more than we realize. And as for the abuterol treatments, there's a similar medicine called Xenopex. Regular inhalers work great too. We have more information on kset.com. Jacob's Well, one of the most popular swimming holes in Texas, will remain closed for the foreseeable future. Hayes County Park officials say it's because of the low water levels and spring flow. The park in Wimberley was closed for the swimming season during 2022 as well. Even though you can't go swimming, you can still visit the area for hiking and viewing the spring itself. And from this angle, I can't see too many problems, but I did see a beautiful sunrise in one yeah, of those transits. I saw that too. Is this it? Let's see if we can find it here, guys, really quick. Uh, you can't really see it because of our trans guide banner above there, but let's get a wider look. 37 at 410, uh, you can see a little bit of the sun that's peeking out over there, but a beautiful start there on the, in terms of what we're seeing on these trans guide cameras. Not really a lot of traffic, but some great views. Uh, let's take a look at the map, and really this is what we have been talking about, some quiet roads, and yes, active construction. We can always expect that to be the case here in the Alamo City and of course some of our surrounding areas. As a quick reminder, this is something that's been current for a little while off Loop 1604 on the far east side of Bear County. We have some cable installation. The work actually began last week and we're going to see it take us all the way up until Saturday, May 13th. The work begins at 8 in the morning, so don't forget it's going to take us all the way up until 4 in the afternoon. Alternating lane closures in both directions from FM 78 to Hanover Cove. But scan this QR code and it takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. There's not just a full list of closures on there, but there's also a question. We want to know how this daily construction impacts your life. What are some creative solutions that you've come up with to navigate around some of the work that we see around the Alamo City? Scan that QR code, head over, scroll to the bottom of your page to the current list of closures. There's a question that's there for you. We want to hear from you and uh, find out how you're navigating these uh, roadways when we see a lot of the work out there. Okay, yeah. thank you, sir. You bet. Might want to grab a jacket. Before we head out the door this morning for some kids, because we've got temperatures in the 60s and 50s will continue to drop down from where we are right now into the mid 50s. Gorgeous sunrise. There's just a couple little clouds out there and then more high clouds, especially later on today. Same temperature as yesterday, but humidity is going to begin its ah, return. Humidity. So. <laughs> and once it comes in, it ain't going nowhere. Pardon my grammar. All right, take a look at this. Page. I love this shot. Oh, that's a good shot. Yes, look at that beautiful, beautiful hawk protecting her nest. Yeah, she's watching oh. this photographer like a... <laughs> well, well, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great shot. Thank you very much. All right. Speaking of beautiful pictures, look at the gorgeous sunrise on tap. One or two of those little uh, high wispy clouds hanging around. Boy, that's a nice picture. Looks kind of like a painting out there. All right. Temperature. We're down to 61 right now. So we started off a couple hours ago, 66. We continue to drop down because we still have those mostly clear skies. Light wind, dry air out there. 55 Port SA, 58 up the road in Bolverde, New Braunfels, 57 degrees. And these dew points remain on the low side, although they have come up just about five, two, three, four, five, six degrees, seven degrees compared to this time yesterday morning, still on the low side. Yesterday, of course, we got down to 50 in the morning. It was a nice chilly morning, then warmed up all the way up to 87 degrees. I mean, 37 degrees, huge, huge warm up, although we will still gain basically 30 degrees throughout the course of the day today. Now, dew points remain low this morning, but then you go into midweek, you get above 60, you start to feel it, and then look at uh, as we get in toward the end of the week and the weekend. Don't even want to say what's on that graph because it is going to be very humid, especially the latter part of the week and the weekend. But the nice thing is some of that humidity is going to get squeezed out in the form of some rain. So here's what it looks like today. More high clouds moving on in here uh, tomorrow morning. A little mist drizzle, some patchy fog around the area. No big deal just because the humidity is increasing so much. Same thing uh, Wednesday morning. A lot of clouds throughout the day on Wednesday. Then we get into Thursday. We'll have a couple of showers kind of hanging around here. And then as we go into Thursday night, that's when we're going to have the better chance for showers and some thunderstorms. Thing we're going to have to watch out Thursday night because there's so much moisture in the air is potentially a couple of heavier downpours here and there. And then Friday, we're going to be 
just seen a lot of clouds, a couple of little leftover showers early on Friday morning, perhaps a shower later on in the day. Saturday will start off just basically humid with a little mist around the area and then another chance for a couple of showers around here on Saturday. So not the optimal weekend, but at least we're seeing some more rain around here, which is just fantastic news because we are above normal. Well, we're above normal for the month of April, all the way going back to the first of March above normal. And just for the year, we're only a half inch behind where we should be. So that's some very good news with all the rain that we've been having recently. 80 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 87, partly cloudy. More humidity It's going to start to work its way back on in here. You'll notice it a little bit more, so it's not going to be quite as comfortable in the shade later on today as it was yesterday. Tomorrow, 82. Same thing on Wednesday, mist drizzle in the morning and then plenty of clouds throughout the day. A little sprinkly shower, perhaps Thursday is the better chance of rain, especially later on Thursday night. Some heavy downpours can be expected and another chance of rain on Saturday. That sunrise is gorgeous. It's got red and orange, blue, purple, everything. Yes, this morning. it is very pretty. I wonder if I can get back to it right there. Let me try it. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Oh. There you go. Wow. Thank you, Mike. Nice. On demand. I love that. 619 <laughs> on your Monday morning, folks. That'll, that'll help Wait. start our day. Yeah. Thanks, Don, the director. So. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thank Don. you, Don. And with some around the corner, we're going to start talking about melanoma again. Just ahead, the warning signs and how you can help protect your skin. <laughs> Asthma isn't pretty. It's the moment when you realize that a good day is about to become a bad one. But then I remembered that the world is so much bigger than that with Trilogy. Because one dose a day helps keep my asthma symptoms under control. And with three medicines and one inhaler, Trilogy helps improve lung function so I can breathe easier for a full 24 hours. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Trilogy contains a medicine that increases risk of hospitalizations and death from asthma problems when used alone. When this medicine is used with an inhaled corticosteroid, like in Trilogy, there is not a significant increased risk of these events. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase risk of thrush and infections. Get emergency care for serious allergic reactions. See your doctor if your asthma does not improve or gets worse. What a wonderful world. Ask your doctor about once daily Trilogy for asthma because breathing should be beautiful. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the mom influencer now facing up to six months in jail. I don't know if I'll ever be composed talking about this. Um, so here we go. A California jury finding Kathleen Sorensen guilty of making a false report to police, accused of lying about a kidnapping of her two children that never happened. Sorensen reporting a kidnapping to police in December 2020 and then posting this Instagram video. My children were the targets of attempted kidnap. But there had been no kidnapping. Her attorney saying Sorensen now realizes she made a mistake. She misperceived and misunderstood a series of random events which were occurring around her. So what happens next to Sorensen? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. And today is Melanoma Monday, a day that is recognized on the first Monday of May each year. Melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer, but has a 99% cure rate if caught early. So melanoma varies um, in terms of like how aggressive it can be. So if caught early, it can be, you know, removed from the skin and it doesn't have any long term consequences. Cases of melanoma have been on the rise. The chance of developing melanoma increases with age, but it can still impact young people as well as all skin types. They say sunscreen is the absolute key to protecting yourself. If you are going to be outside, use a broad spectrum SPF of 30 or higher. Um, it's important to reapply every two hours if you are going to be outside or if you get wet, making sure you use like a water resistant sunscreen. Um, they also make UPF clothing. So if you're someone that doesn't want to lather up in lots of sunscreen, um, there's an ultraviolet protective factor in certain clothing you can buy. And it is crucial to get regular skin checks, especially if you have a personal or family history of skin cancer. 624 at about 60 degrees. Ahead on GMA, the countdown is on to the coronation of King Charles III. And this morning, all eyes are on Prince Harry. He is expected to attend the coronation, but without his wife, Meghan, and their children. 
A look for previews starting at 7 on Good Morning America. And looking at the roads with Transcan, that beautiful sunrise out there on this early Monday morning, I-37 at U.S. Highway 181. We'll check in with Stephen a little bit later on in the half hour. Kingdom. It's four weeks and $490 million total domestically for the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> That's after collecting another $40 million over the weekend, holding the number one spot and boosting its global gross to just over $1.2 billion. Here we go! The first film of the year to pass that milestone. Are you there, God? It's me. Margaret. The best of the new releases, a modest 6.8 billion third place bow for Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret, adapted from the beloved book. New York's hottest club is boof. <laughs> Former SNL star Bill Hader tells The Independent he's open to returning to the show as his beloved nightlife guide character, Stefan. The fourth and final season of his hit HBO drama, Barry, wraps May 28th. Cause you're mine. 67 years ago Monday, Johnny Cash released his classic hit, I Walk the Line. At happy 56th birthday to country superstar Tim McGraw. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Now at 6.30, armed and dangerous a manhunt for a man accused of killing a Texas family of five is heating up. We're keeping a close eye on the investigation. Plus... Oh my God, that is a tornado. Look at the debris, oh my God. A week in a wild weather ends with a tornado threat in the mid-Atlantic. We're taking a closer look at the damage and what's next. And let's look out there with a live cam. It's a beautiful sunrise, 59 degrees. And yesterday we got a taste of the heat, but um, look forward to some more coming your way. Welcome back, 6.30 on your Monday. It is May 1st. Happy Monday. We hope you had a wonderful weekend and a wonderful Fiesta week, as for the most part, the weather worked out. It did. It worked out very well. And Mike says now we're back to more late spring-like weather. Yeah, we had a couple of uh, showers move through and a couple of nights of Niosa and Friday night, of course, with those bigger storms. With the big, big events, you know, the parades and everything, yeah, we just, just couldn't have asked for better timing with some of that. The rain has been quite a welcome sight, and now we've got a gorgeous sunrise. So this morning's pretty much a continuation of what we had over the weekend, which was perfect and 61 degrees right now. Dew point still at 50, which means we still have very dry air in place. We'll continue to drop down another couple of degrees with those clear skies out there, light wind, and of course that dry air. We are at uh, 55 Port SA, 51 right now, Rio Medina and New Braunfels at 57 degrees. So maybe in a couple of spots, a light little jacket and dry air. Enjoy it now because it's not going to be sticking around forever. The end is in sight, and that's going to start to, humidity will start to work its way back in here throughout the course of the day. All the allergens are on the low side this morning, and we've got upper 80s later on today. A couple more high clouds. You saw a few wispy ones there on the uh, live cam picture, but more of those high clouds will move in throughout the day. And, of course, the humidity will begin its return and really come back in here overnight. So we'll start off with some fog, maybe a mist, a sprinkle in the morning, low 80s in the afternoon, plenty of clouds around. And same thing on Wednesday. Then as we go in toward late Wednesday and especially Thursday, better rain chances and could have some potentially heavy downpours in pockets late Thursday night. Then going into the weekend, a couple of showers around later on the day on Saturday. And best way to put it, just going to be hot and humid this weekend. Yeah, it seems like we are getting an early taste of summer this week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Hey, just trying to keep up with the beautiful sunrise here on the Transguide camera. Mike, let's get a look there. 90 at 36. Both the east and westbound lanes don't look too bad, but I think the sky really takes the cake there as you see the sun peeking up. Uh, really, traffic's been moving through the area without any trouble, but it is obviously going to start slowing down as more folks get the commute moving this morning. Let's take a look there at the map, and that's always expected as a little bit of that red is already starting to form there along US 90 eastbound. If you're traveling in from Castroville, just prepare for some slowdowns. That's a normal congestion that we tend to see. Also along 35 southbound, if you're traveling in from Live Oak, let's say this early in the morning, you'll see a little bit of that congestion that builds up and this is all normal. But other than that, the big talking point has been construction. Up until now, we're going to see a little bit more folks out there, but we'll watch roads clip the roads closely and thankfully it's a nice view here. But remember to keep your focus out on the roads. We'll have an update on some of more of those road closures and how that could impact your drive time coming up a little bit later on, Mark. 
Thank you. Top story this morning. Hundreds of law enforcement officers are searching for the man accused of opening fire inside a neighbor's home in Cleveland, Cleveland, north of Houston. Five people were killed, including an eight year old boy. Authorities say they have zero leads as they conduct door to door searches. ABC's Lionel Moise reports. <laughs> Hundreds of people gathered at this elementary school north of Houston last night, remembering the victims of a shooting rampage that has this small community living in fear. No tengo palabras como... Wilson Garcia and his wife were hosting guests at their home Friday night when Garcia says his neighbor, Francisco Oropesa, began firing an AR-15 from his porch for fun. This is a small community where neighbors say that every single weekend people fire weapons for fun. It's the norm. What happened here at this house, though, no one thought was possible. Garcia says when he asked Oropesa to stop, Oropesa stormed into his house and began shooting, killing five people, including Garcia's wife and son. Garcia says after Oropesa shot his wife, another woman told him to escape through the window because she knew his wife would not survive. <laughs> Ten people in the house escaped without injuries. According to authorities, two women were found lying on top of surviving children. And witnesses describe other children surviving after someone threw a pile of clothes on them. Authorities and scent dogs later tracked Oropesa to a wooded area, finding his clothes and phone. But then they lost track of him. We have zero leads. Investigators are now offering an $80,000 reward for information leading to Oropesa. Meanwhile, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is now facing criticism for identifying the victims as undocumented immigrants in the same statement in which he offered condolences to their loved ones. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. The other big story we're following this morning, J.P. Morgan Chase is buying most of First Republic Bank's assets and assuming the lenders insured and uninsured deposits. First Republic becomes the third U.S. bank to fail since March. It's also the second largest bank failure in the nation's history. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, took control of the embattled bank and arranged the deal. Look for the latest on this story coming up on Good Morning America, beginning at 7. And now to the extreme weather after a twister was seen picking up cars in Florida. A reported tornado caused serious damage in Virginia last night and relentless rain flooded parts of the northeast. ABC's Rihanna and Ali is tracking the latest this morning. A weekend of wild weather ended with a tornado threat in the mid-Atlantic. Christy, go downstairs. New video shows a twister touching down in Virginia Beach. Oh my God, that is a tornado uprooting trees and damaging up to 100 homes in the area. Look at the debris, oh my God. 22 million people were on alert for severe storms and flooding at the time. Heavy rain triggered flooding on major highways around New York City, forcing drivers to sit in traffic for up to four hours. Bronx River shut down. Uh, Sprain shut down. In New Jersey, two curious boys were rescued by boat after becoming trapped inside this flooded tunnel. And we saw that we had a lot of water. It was at least three feet from what we could see. They were sitting on a pipe that runs the whole length of the, uh, the tunnel. So they were sitting there and they were just trying to stay out of the water. It all followed severe storms in Florida. This is the scariest thing I've ever seen. Oh my God. This tornado hitting Palm Beach Gardens Saturday. I just saw a car flip over in front of me. Packing winds up to 130 miles per hour. Oh my God. It's like right in front of Oh my God. Lifting this car off the ground before slamming it down. Oh Meanwhile, in the Midwest, the Mississippi River is expected to crest today. The river has risen to its highest levels in decades in parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois. Barge traffic carrying fertilizer and grain has been halted along portions of the river. And in parts of the West, near record heat is melting snow, triggering flood concerns. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. Back here at Home Fiesta 2023 is officially a wrap, and it was a whirlwind of celebration, fun, and of course, all the food. On Leading SA this weekend, the executive director of the Fiesta San Antonio Commission talked about some of the changes made this year that helped turn few days into a success. 
Steve joined us and we talked about a lot. And we really talked about a full recap of Fiesta highlighted by that phenomenal Fiesta flambeau that happened on Saturday night. But we talked about how this Fiesta went, some of the changes that we saw, and some of the future changes we may see in the next Fiesta. We also talked about the numbers, talked about that economic impact. Here's a part of our discussion. We did a, an economic impact study a few years ago, and the results showed $340 million economic impact to San Antonio. So that's that's a great that's a great boost for the economy for San Antonio, but it doesn't necessarily track the charitable impact that our organizations do too, which is tremendous. And we'll be getting a lot of those numbers back in the next couple of weeks from our organizations. Really, when we say uh, party with a purpose, our organizations are doing a great job of because of Fiesta, they're able to raise funds to support their organizations that support the citizens of San Antonio throughout the entire year. And that's really why we do Fiesta. You can watch the entire Leading SA conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Of course, we have Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We talk to leaders in and around our community about timely issues. So, guys, we'll see you soon next Sunday morning. Back to you. Thanks, Max. And Fiesta may have come and gone, but you can relive all the great moments on KSAT.com. You can see all the parades, like this one. That was Saturday night's Fiesta Flambeau Parade. And we also have highlights from NIOSA and the other big events. Just to head to our website, KSAT.com. Look for these stories on the homepage. Also on KSAT.com, lots of you uploaded your Fiesta pictures to KSAT Connect. You can check them all out also there on the homepage. Time now, 639 and 60 degrees for now. After the break, how Stray became a therapy dog thanks to an SAPD officer. And welcome back at 642. A San Antonio dog went from abandoned stray to certified therapy dog, and it's all thanks to a local San Antonio police officer. Pause for service therapy dog Neely and his uh, owner, Officer Jason Hoekstra, now volunteer to help bring joy to the community. Our Sarah Costa introduces us to the therapy team and how their work together goes beyond the badge. Neely is a Rottweiler Bull Terrier mix and is a big teddy bear who just wants to snuggle and give kisses. And he gets to do it for a living now as a certified therapy animal through the local nonprofit Pause for Service. But it wouldn't have been possible without his owner, San Antonio Police Officer Jason Hoekstra. When I was in training at the academy a couple years ago, Neely showed up on the grounds as a stray. And uh, he was out there for a couple weeks, and I told my wife, I'm like, we got to save that dog. Hoekstra rescued Neely, but soon realized Neely had a calling. One day I noticed, you know, I'd come home after a long day at work, I'd sit down on the couch. Neely would just kind of sit up next to me and kind of snuggle in, and I thought, man, this dog's got a purpose. Neely, sit. Sit. Good, good sit. After going through weeks of training, Hoekstra and Neely became a certified volunteer therapy team for Paws for Service. It's wonderful to see him so you know, we walk through the doors at our at our senior facility where we're assigned and uh, and their faces just light up. Officer Hoekstra and Neely have been certified with Pause for Service for about a month, but they hope to spread joy throughout the community for years to come. Hoekstra even takes Neely once a week to SAPD's Wellness Center, where they visit with officers. Hoekstra says he has always loved to volunteer in his community, and he hopes when people see his badge with Neely, it can make a positive connection. Present that as an extension of, of my work. Um, just kind of places a human element to the badge and you know can help help others see that that yes we're we're humans, we're individuals too, um, just like them. And Neely is a is a great conversation starter as well. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, Neela's loving the attention, isn't he? Yes, yeah. he is. What a cutie. I love that. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, thanks, Sarah. Time now, 644, and it looked okay last check of Transguide Guide, but let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Just getting a little bit busier over here. Thankfully, no major issues have been reported, but we're starting to see a little bit more of that congestion just take over our map, and you can really see it behind me, 281 at Grayson. Yeah, those north and southbound lanes are expected to get busy, especially as the minutes do go by, and that's because people are just getting the day started, so remember, the roads will be a a little bit more crowded, so just be kind out there. Uh, giving you a look at the map, really what we've been showing you is a lot of that red, as I mentioned, in yellow, just taking over the screen behind me, but uh, no major issues have been reported, just some of the active construction. But I do want to take a look at some of the drive times. Uh, forgot to mention this a little bit earlier, US 90, we're already in the yellow there. If you're heading in from Castroville, should be about a 45 minute commute, but thankfully it's still pretty pleasant from Pleasanton, 37 northbound, 28 minutes, and the arrival from Lytle along I-35 northbound should be about 17 minutes. But back here, Transguide shows the commute's busy, but not.
not bad, but we'll see how things shape up during our morning cut-ins, but we'll be watching things closely. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Moon is going to be full this coming Friday, and the past few evenings have just been gorgeous out there to look at the moon. It is a waxing gibbous. Thank you very much, Oscar, for that <laughs> great picture. How gorgeous is that? Oh, beautiful. Uh, as far as moon gazing tonight, we're going to have a few extra clouds hanging on in here. Obviously, we're going to have beautiful sunrise this morning. Just beautiful out there. Uh, 56 at Balverde, 58 Comfort. So grab a jacket in some spots. 61 here in town. We'll drop down a few more degrees before the sun comes up and really starts to heat things up. And it will warm up pretty quickly this morning because we still have this dry air in place. Although these numbers have gone up slightly from where we were yesterday. Yesterday, of course, we started off at 50 and got up to 87. We're not going to have that big of a, still a pretty big warm up, 25 to 30 degrees, which is a good indication of pretty dry air. And that's why we, with the dry air, warm up so quickly this morning, about five degrees each and every hour. A couple of clouds hanging out there. Nine, or excuse me, 80 at noon. Bite my tongue for saying 90. And then later on this afternoon, we're going to be up close to 90, though. Uh, 87 for a high temperature. Wind's going to shift out of the southeast. So that's going to begin to pull the humidity back on in here. It's not going to be as comfortable later on today as it was yesterday, even the same high temperature. There's a few of those high clouds coming in here from the uh, the west, and those, like I said, will continue to sort of fill in and thicken up throughout the day. Big, big storm system up there around the Great Lakes, even more snow in parts of the western Great Lakes. That's actually the system that pulled the front through here uh, on Friday evening, produced some of those uh, strong to severe storms and all that rain, and pulled in the drier air, and the drier air is in place right now. Now, but again, the humidity comes back in here and it really sticks around throughout the rest of the week. So unlike last week in the past uh, couple of weeks, we've had these little fronts here and there. Not going to be the situation this week. Here's the computer model. And again, a couple of extra clouds hanging around here throughout the day today and then tomorrow. We'll start off with mist and drizzle in the morning with the extra humidity. This model has a slight sprinkle. Yes, you can't really rule it out. Uh, pretty much the same thing on Wednesday. Mist, some patchy fog in the morning, and then plenty of clouds throughout the day. Thursday, we will have a few scattered showers around in the afternoon. And then you go into Thursday night, and this is when we have the better chance for showers and thunderstorms as things are shaping up right now, and some potentially heavy downpours. A lot of moisture in the atmosphere, and it's like a big old sponge that's just going to get squeezed out. So that's why we could have some of those locally heavy downpours around here Thursday night. Leftover showers Friday and Saturday. I think we have another shot at uh, some showers coming on in here later on in the afternoon. So forecasted, I mean, it's great news that we got some rain, though. Uh, forecast 80 at noon, mostly sunny skies. It, humidity continues to move back in here throughout the course of the day. You'll notice it more this afternoon, 87 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Then mist, drizzle, a little bit of fog tomorrow morning. Same thing Wednesday morning. Lower temperatures, 82. So that'll be a bit of a break. And then better chance of rain, especially later Thursday. A couple of showers Friday, Saturday, but boy, it's going to be hot and humid this weekend. Back. At least we got some rain in the forecast. Tonight. Yes, yes, we, we got that covered. In yep. April. Thank you, Mike. 649, 59 degrees. Tomorrow on GMSA, teaching kids about body safety and boundaries. Experts say one in three females and one in 20 males will experience sexual abuse or sexual assault by the time they're 17 years old. We're going to share some of the things you can share with your kids about body safety and boundaries. Outside with like, and we know Mondays can be pretty meh, but right now miles and miles of smiles with a beautiful sunrise on this May 1st. Be right back. In today's Tech Bytes, the Apple Watch is reportedly getting a major redesign. According to Bloomberg, the overhauled operating system will have a new focus on apps. The device will be reminiscent of the Surrey watch face that was introduced in 2017, and Apple is reportedly testing a tweak to the Apple Watch's physical buttons. More Twitter changes are on the way. Elon Musk will allow media outlets to charge users per article, as opposed to having them pay for a full subscription. Musk calls the move a win-win for media organizations and 
the public. The feature is expected to begin this month. Finally, Instagram is testing a new way to let users add songs to the photo carousels they post. The platform already allows you to add music to individual pictures. The new feature is already available in a few countries. No word on when it will debut here in the U.S. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rian and Ali. Have a great day. Good morning. It's a Monday here at GMA. We'll start with the failing First Republic Bank, seized and sold. J.P. Morgan Chase bought it, saved it from the brink of collapse. Now we're going to tell you what it means for everybody. And then the urgent manhunt in Texas for the suspect who authorities say killed five people, including a nine-year-old boy, after having a dispute with his neighbors. You'll see that story and so much more right here on GMA. Coming up on GMSA at 9, early voting is coming to an end, and our Max Massey will be live with a look at how things are going so far and what you need to know if you're getting ready to head to the polls. Now, that's a little later on, GMSA at 9. Check on traffic at about 5 till 7 on your Monday. How's yeah. it look, Stephen? Well, if you're getting ready to head out the door, thankfully, uh, you can expect some quiet roads here at I-10 at Lock and Terra Parkway, and also a nice view of the sky as the sun is getting uh, ready to peak up there, but really not seeing any issues. I-10 East and westbound lanes are fine. They're quiet, perfect time to take uh, advantage of the quiet roadways. Right behind me, we're going to see a little bit more of the congestion take over the map. Again, same spots, folks. US-90 eastbound, watch out as you're traveling into San Antonio from Castroville. Starting to see a little bit more of a slowdown there along State Highway 151. East as well, uh, as you can see a little bit more of that orange that is building around Leon Valley and Live Oak 35 southbound. You better watch out because we're going to see some stretches of uh, traffic out there. But back here on the Trans Guide camera, I-10 at Lock and Terra Parkway. It's been a nice morning so far. You can see traffic has been moving without any big trouble. Uh, thankfully, again, we made it through without any issues, but watch out for construction. We're going to have more on that a little bit later on in the uh, throughout the day. Take your sunglasses this morning and we're not really going to be seeing any good sunrises like this the rest of the week. So enjoy what's out there right now. We've got temperatures now at 58 degrees at the airport. 57s comfort as well as burning stage. Low humidity might need a light jacket. You won't need it this afternoon. 87 same as yesterday, but we will have a few more clouds out there and the humidity begins its return. It's going to stay pretty humid throughout the rest of the week. Mist drizzle, a little fog the next couple of mornings and a stray shower is possible later Wednesday. Better chance of rain Thursday and especially Thursday night with some potentially heavy downpours. We're going to have to keep kind of tracking that. A shower to Friday and another shot at some rain later Saturday. And pretty hot and humid this weekend. Okay, and again, welcome to San Antonio to the cast and crew of To Kill a Mockingbird playing at the Majestic tomorrow through Sunday. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at 9.